Welcome to Be Ready with Safety Man. I'm Corey Jones with Safety Man Security Consulting, safetyman.co. Be ready with Safety Man on rvntv.tv. Remember at Safety Man Security Consulting, we do three things to keep you safe. We do taser training. Tasers are legal in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Philadelphia. We do active shooter or all hazards training for businesses, churches, schools, daycares. And we do alarm camera monitoring systems for your business or your residents. But guess what I have for you today? I have a friend and a IBFF pro women's physique competitor named Trisha Vazarian. <laughs> Thank you, Welcome Corey. to the show. Thank you. Although it is IFBB. IFBB. Did I say it wrong? Yes, you did. That's oh, okay. I tried. So tell me about yourself a little bit. So, I'm, uh, first of all, I'm a mom of three, three young kids. I'm going to be 51 in March. Um, and I'm a uh, professional bodybuilder, as you mentioned, physique competitor. I've been in the sport for many years. Um, it's also my trade. I'm a uh, fitness and nutrition consultant and trainer, um, building customized fitness programs for people. And that's just kind of like a snapshot, but mm -hmm. where do you want to go from there? Well, I want to know about your history. Like, how did, how did you start? How did you get into this? Um, it started, gosh, my interest started when I was a um, sophomore in high school. And I uh, used to run home off the bus to hurry up to get to Elaine Powers. It, you're probably too young to remember Elaine Powers. They tell me not to do this, but my mom used to be an Elaine Powers coach back in like 1978, 79. Awesome. So yeah, so Elaine Powers was a big uh, fitness facility for women. So here I am, a sophomore in high school, getting off the bus, running home to get my leotard and leg warmers on <laughs> to hurry up and catch the uh, 3.30 class. So that's when it first started, my interest. And then um, it, it continued to grow. And when I finally became uh, a senior in high school, we had an opportunity to do a co-op where we would work outside of the classroom in a business for a couple hours. We get to leave school around 12.30 right after lunch. And so I did my co-op at a fitness facility and uh, teaching classes and introducing people to the weight machines and so forth. And then from there, um, I decided that that's what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. is I wanted to pursue the health and fitness industry as a career option. So you were in high school teaching people how to work out? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So like this, what, uh, where, like this in New Jersey or where was it? Yes, it was all in New Jersey. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So then after high school, what, what happened then? So um, I, I did go to a vocational high school, mm -hmm. and therefore I was not prepared for college. And um, I started doing some research because I decided that I wanted to go to school for sports medicine. Well, you know, we're looking at schools like Penn State and Temple and East Stroudsburg University, University of Delaware, things like that. Well, I wasn't prepared, so I had to go to BCC for a couple years and, uh, you know, really prove that, that I was capable of, of the, you know, the stringent academics at these types of universities. So I did, and I was able to transfer to Penn State, their main campus, and I pursued a degree in exercise and sports science. Uh, graduated from there uh, with honors, and um, then again got back into the fitness arena. Um, and that is slowly after that point in time is when my interest in the sport of competition grew. So you tell me about like that fitness degree, like what did you learn? How does that apply to what you're doing today and in how you can help other people? Well, first off, I mean, it's, it's very medically based in terms of anatomy and physiology. You need to know, you know, how the body is put together, the muscles and the bones and what they do um, and what joint actions they're responsible for. You need to understand how the body works. And then from there, you, you learn how the body responds both acutely and chronically to prolonged stress of training and different types of training. So you're understanding a cause-effect relationship between um, how you train and the end result of, of how that changes performance. And the, obviously, did that kind of change the way you approached uh, lifting, bodybuilding, and helping other people from like your Elaine Power days mm -hmm. to after you got your degree? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, it didn't, there wasn't a lot of applied um, like it was more research based, the, my degree. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really out in the gym type of stuff, like seeing how this type of training protocol affects muscular mass or, or strength or power. Um, that kind of came later, but it definitely gave me the foundation that I needed mm -hmm. um, to really bring everything full 360. Okay, so 
I, I really, I'm interested, I know our guests are gonna be really interested in how do you train, like how does this happen? Well, um, it all starts with sound training principles and again, understanding how the body works and responds to different types of training protocols. Um, then from there, it's really about a mindset and a commitment. It's about doing day in and day out what's required to make it happen. Not only from a training perspective, but also in the kitchen nutritionally. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but as far as the way I personally train, uh, I like to lift heavy weights and I like to, um, you know, experiment with, with new angles and new uh, types of stimuli to keep my body surprised. So it just has to keep guessing and responding to, to the stimulus and therefore continue to develop. So that actually, that actually does work? Like muscle confusion and, and oh, all those yeah. different things yeah. like those weeder principles that they used to talk about years ago like muscle confusion and all that stuff mm -hmm. well it's you know there's there's a principle called progressive overload and you need to progressively overload your system mm -hmm. in order to cause it to see something as a threat so once it's seen as a threat then the body makes adaptations and that's the acute and chronic things I was talking about earlier it makes adaptations to to um, to meet the new demands so muscle confusion in its simplest form mm -hmm. is, is just changing things up. But in the more complex form, it's changing it up with a strategy in mind. Kind of knowing, knowing what you're doing, why you're doing different things, and also for how long. So, you know, you can't just, that's why you're supposed to change up your program every six to eight weeks or so. Mm -hmm. um, and a beginner uh, will definitely see a lot of changes in the beginning, but when you become more advanced, uh, the changes are minimal. Um, but but it's okay. So you, basically what you're telling me is you probably I can't do this by myself or a person couldn't get to this physique by themselves. They would probably need a coach and a trainer. And we were talking earlier, there were some influential people that came through your life in reference to your becoming a pro. Can you tell me about them? Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, just like it, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes you know, a team of people to raise a champion. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it dates far back. I mean, there's been many influential people, but the more recent ones I would say would be uh, Barry Fritz, who's the owner of the National Personal Training Institute in Philadelphia. That's where I went to school, um, spent 500 hours, both applied and classroom hours, learning under his wing. Um, so he's been a tremendous help um, in not only developing my knowledge, but also for, to be a trainer, but um, we continue to train together. Mm -hmm. um, and he continues to teach me new things every time I'm with him. And then of course, there's the love of my life too, who supports me in so many ways, I can't even quantify it. Um, it's just the rock behind it all. Um, there's also my personal coach, uh, whose name is Shane Hewley. He really manages my pre-contest prep, getting my body dialed in so that I can step on stage looking like the pictures that you see on the screen. So stepping on stage, how does that feel like, you know, an hour before, five minutes before, and then boom, the lights are on and here you go? Well, uh, I have stage fright. So, um, <laughs> I mean, you know, five minutes before I'm pretty, you know, I have to have a lot of conversations with myself and calm myself down. It's really, I, I need to, to get myself grounded um, because I can let the, the whole, you know, the lights and the people and the humming and, and the music, all that can, overstimulate me mm -hmm. and make me feel really nervous and affect my performance. So that's like five minutes before. But um, what brings me comfort in competing is it's all in the preparation. So um, it, it, you've already done what you can do by the time you get to backstage. You've done it. You know, you've done the dieting, you've done the training, you, you're prepared, mm -hmm. you know, at least you should be. I always am, okay, always. Never once have I stepped on stage saying, I could have done this, I should have done that. So that brings me a lot of comfort. Um, so once I get the stage fright under control, then the excitement starts to take over. Um, and then you're like, oh my gosh, I wish I could compete again tomorrow, you know, because you're all fired up, the endorphins are going. But being on stage um, with, and it's very humbling, by the way, because when you're out in everyday life, like at the mall or at the gym, the local gym or the supermarket, you know, I kind of look different. So um, you kind of see yourself in a different way, but then when you get backstage and you're with all these amazing athletes, it's humbling. You think to yourself, wow, you know? It puts everything in perspective. 
So, and that brings back perspective comes from mindset, and you had yeah. mentioned that earlier, and I, I know that's important to you, and it's important to me, the way I train my clients is having the proper mindset. Mm -hmm. So you have to have mindset from the time your alarm goes off at 5 a.m. until your contest. Mm -hmm. Like, can you tell me how, you know, those, sure. like, like tomorrow morning when it's 5 a.m. and you were up late, whatever, you still gotta hit the gym, you still gotta prepare your meals. Yeah. Tell me about how that mindset works. Well, overall, I mean, the mindset f to me is to train, eat, and act like a champion. And so that dictates all of my behaviors throughout the day. Um, now, of course, off season, I'm a little bit more, you know, relaxed with those behaviors. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but um, when, I, when I'm in my prep, that's, that's the, the foundation of my day. And everything that I do and don't do is based upon those principles. But I have a Rolodex of, of mantras in my head that you know when things get tough and when I'm in the gym and I just don't feel like doing this or I don't feel like doing that or I really want to do this I have a Rolodex of things that I go through and it's self-talk and it's it's really um, a means of of controlling you know my actions and controlling you know how effective I am with achieving my goal well, I remember when we met, we were in the gym mm -hmm. and you were doing incline dumbbell presses with a weight greater than I was using. And you said, can you give me a spot? And I want you to know that that motivated me. The mindset in you being in the gym can definitely motivate our guests because we were talking earlier. You can always get it back. That's right. right? Yes. Tell me about that. So um, for me, um, I took an 18 year hiatus from the sport. I competed as a pro back in the early 90s. Um, after graduating from college, competed in the Miss Universe, placed six there. And um, interesting realizing at that show that I would probably never be the best. And for some reason, I lacked the maturity to understand that it wasn't really about being the best, it was about being my best. I learned that later in life. Anyway, I felt discouraged, I felt deflated, so I took a lot of time off from the sport. And um, then I got married, had children, and I became second. Children and husband became first. So I put all my goals off to the side, um, which a lot of women do, unfortunately, which I would discourage against. And then in 2012, um, or 2011 rather, I decided, you know what, I need to take back me. And this is after 18 years. And I, you know, basically, not, not 18 years completely away from the gym, but many of those years away from the gym, walked through the gym doors again, mm -hmm. and. Uh, got back into it and as soon as we're going to get back into it after this break stay here for our sponsors come back we're going to talk about how that mindset and how you can get it back is going to propel you on your road to the olympia mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. come back with be ready with safety man boardwalks built for fun Legendary rock and roll clubs. This is how we do it. Casinos by the ocean. Now that's New Jersey. 130 miles of beautiful beaches. Solid rock. And everything in between. Look in the window. Now that's New Jersey. Burlington County College. Is now Rowan College at Burlington County. Still the same great faculty. At a community college ranked top 50 in the nation. Basically, we earn more and pay less. RCBC students are accepted at Rowan University after graduation. And get a bachelor's degree for around $30,000. Online and Mount Laurel students get a 15% Rowan University tuition discount. And at many scholarship opportunities. So you earn more and pay even less. Rowan College at Burlington County. Your path to success. All right, welcome back. Thanks for watching those sponsors. I'm Corey with Be Ready with Safety Man. Remember, Safety Man Security Consulting, safetyman.co does three things to keep you safe. Go to safetyman.co and you can find that out. Hit me up so I can make sure that you are ready. I'm here with Trish, an IFBB Pro Fitness Competitor. Women's physique competitor. Women's physique competitor. Close. I knew I was gonna get it wrong, because I wasn't ready. That's why you have to be ready. We have some pictures coming up, and you're gonna talk about some of those pictures and how you can get it back, right? Sure. All right. 
Okay, well, um, just kind of going from our last um, segue uh, with regards to getting it back, taking 18 years off from the sport, decided to get back into it in 2012. So this picture was taken last summer, and uh, that was 2018, so we're talking six, six years of training um, and dieting. So this was uh, following the Tampa Pro the day after, my first pro show, my debut. Your first pro show in yeah. Tampa? Yes. And how did we do? I placed 14th out of 35, awesome. which is really good. Um, again, I'm 51, I'm competing against girls who are 25 years younger than me, 20, 30 years younger than me, so I felt really good about it. Good, and our next picture is going to be? Okay, so this is also on stage at the Tampa Pro. So um, there's mandatory poses that we have to conduct when we're on stage, mm -hmm. and uh, that's one of them, that's a side chest pose. So um, the other picture was taken the day after. This was taken on stage in the morning. And there's a panel of judges that are sitting below, usually seven to nine judges. And they are critiquing every aspect of your physique. Men and women judges, former bodybuilders? Yes, men and women judges, some are not. Some are just fans of the sport, have been around the sport for a long time and in one capacity or another. In fact, I'm actually uh, going through training to become a judge myself. That's awesome. Yeah. Any more pictures we have? Yeah. Okay. So um, this one also at the Tampa Pro, uh, this picture was taken by Annie Rebecchio of Muscle Angels. And just, they, they like to capture different footage of different competitors and they put it on their websites for other uh, fans of the sport to view. Okay. And then I think we have, which, which picture is this? This too is also that Tampa Pro weekend. Um, just, you know, some of those glamour shots. Okay. So that's not on stage, obviously. That's not on stage, okay. no. no. <laughs> but there was a uh, before and after, or before picture, I don't know if you have that, the one from 2011. Okay, how would we find that on your social media? Um, well, my social media, I have two sites. I have a Facebook mm -hmm. athlete page, and I also have um, Instagram. Mm -hmm. So um, on Facebook, I'm Trisha Physique. Mm -hmm. And on Instagram, I am Trisha Physique underscore IFBB Pro. IFBB Pro, my favorite four yes. letters that I can't say. It's okay. <laughs> okay, so give me those again so our, our guests can find you. Yes, yeah, so Facebook is, my athlete page is Trisha Physique, and then um, my Instagram is Trisha Physique underscore IFBB Pro. All right. You might also be able to find me under Trisha Smick as well, in addition to Vizarian, because that was my former married name. Okay. So we're here, we're gonna have a three-part series, and this is our first of three parts coming up. You're on the road to Olympia. You have up some upcoming contests, and you're in your prep now. So can you talk about that for me? Sure, well actually my prep starts next week. Mm -hmm. So it's probably gonna be a 12 to 14 week process of just chiseling my body. I mean, the muscle is there. It's covered by a little bit of fat and water, but um, that's- Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the process over the next several weeks will be um, basically uh, dieting away, training away that, that fat that separates the muscle from the skin so mm -hmm. that you can have the type of physique that you saw in the pictures. Um, during that time, I'll also uh, pose with a posing coach mm -hmm. um, because posing is critical. It's not just about what your body looks like, but it's how you display what you worked hard for. Kenny Wallach um, in, in New York, I posed with him, world-renowned coach uh, in terms of posing. And then my first show will be at the end of May, and that will be in Puerto Rico. And then a few weeks after that, I'll be competing in uh, Utah. And then after that, I'll be competing in Chicago. So tell me how those shows in the Olympia are connected. So um, when you turn pro, uh, there's shows that if you win or if you place within a certain number um, that you, if you win, you automatically qualify for the Olympia. If you place second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth example, um, you earn certain points. And it's the accumulation of points in lieu of winning one of these shows that will help qualify you for the Olympia. So I have three shows planned out. But if I win the Puerto Rico Pro, which I hope I do, but you know, I hope for the best, but <laughs> expect the worst of us, <laughs> then I don't really need to compete in those other two shows. Then I take the time off and prepare for the Olympia in September. But if I don't win, if I place, you know, any place other than first, then I need to keep competing so I can add the points to that tally to eventually qualify. 
So we're going to check back in, and you're going to come back on in a couple of, like maybe I think what you said, about a month and a half? About a month and a half, yes. You're going to come back on, and we're going to have some, some more pictures of your journey. Yes. You're going to tell us how that journey's going and, and uh, how you feel about that upcoming show. Absolutely. Right? And it's going to be where? In the first one's Puerto Rico. All right, so if our guests want to come down to Puerto Rico and support <laughs> you, they'll go to your social media page yes. and you'll tell them exactly yes. how and when to get there and we yes. can sit there and cheer. And I'll right. also be posting updates as well. So should I bring you like a cheeseburger for after the show? Actually, no, um, I don't do that. I do more like pasta. A pasta? Yeah, <laughs> okay. pasta. I'm more of a, a like a, you know, kind of like a carbohydrate person. I like hear you. Like stick to the bones type of stuff. I hear you. Yeah. But not starting next week, then that's... No, in fact, um, this is my last week of reprieve so part of what you do is you train other people right in, in their fitness goals and you have a business called body epic by trish yes e-p-i-k right. right body epic by trish can you tell me about what that is and and how that helps people sure um body epic by trish was formed as a result of all of my years of training in the classroom um, and outside the classroom in the fitness world and and really just having the technical knowledge and also the street knowledge of how to help people achieve their goals. So the main thing about Body Epic is really body transformation, helping people change the composition of their body, you know, to basically increase lean body mass, decrease fat weight, and have an overall more aesthetically pleasing and healthy physique. So I do that by, first of all, understanding their goals and then understanding any health limitations or medical limitations they may have, and then uh, developing a customized training protocol. Um, and again, a progressive protocol. So I continue to work with them. I change it up every six to eight weeks or so. And along the way, um, you, know, you can work out in the gym all you want and train as hard and as effectively as you want, but if you're not doing the right thing in the kitchen, number one, you might not be able to build the lean body mass. Actually, you won't be able to, and you won't be losing the fat weight. So then I develop a nutrition program as well. And it's all based upon very, it's a very specific formula on how to determine how much and what each person should be eating to achieve a certain body composition. Wow, so that's a lot. So you do fitness, nutrition, and then if somebody did want to compete, you could still help them achieve that goal? Yes, I do that as well, absolutely. So have any specific success stories, any clients that you remember having that like had really lofty goals or they really went from, I don't want to say a mess to this, but any like success yeah. stories? Yeah, sure, I have plenty, but one recently that just mm -hmm. comes to mind. Mm -hmm. um, she lost about 20, 25 pounds in, in a 11 week period and it's not even the number because, I mean, she could, you know, technically speaking, I think that she probably lost more than that, but what happened was is her lean body mass increased so dramatically that it kind of disguised the overall weight loss. Mm -hmm. So the look of her body um, just changed completely. And I, I relate to her specifically because she was kind of in my shoes where she has three young kids. She's, you know, she used to work out before. She actually competed once as a figure competitor. Um, she lost all of that and uh, you know she basically was in this mindset of feeling lost you know mentally mm -hmm. like she lost who she was because she identified with that part of herself so much so it wasn't just the body composition uh, achievements that she uh, obtained that wasn't the only thing that made her one of my success stories but also just getting back that mindset you know getting back the fire getting back the oomph and just her overall feeling of, you know, feeling good about herself. Trish, thank you. Are you ready? You can get it back. You can get back the fire. I don't care if you haven't been to the gym. I don't care if you haven't trained in how to defend yourself. I don't care if you never trained your business, church, or school how to handle an emergency. You can get it back. Body Epic by Trish for your body. <laughs> Safetyman.co for your safety. Come back next week on Be Ready with Safety Man. <laughs>